We're in the middle of creating the update method for our enemy ships. While we've dealt with moving ships and dealing with ships that go out of bounds, we still need to deal with making them move in the right direction to begin with. We can take care of two problems at once here. One of the other issues to deal with is what happens when a ship dies, either by going off the screen or, in the next chapter, getting hit with a missile. So instead of being alive, we want some code to execute if the ship is not alive. Specifically, we're going to take any ship that's dead, resurrect it, and set a random position and velocity for it. This will deal with ships that have died in the line of duty, and also, because all of the ship's start is dead, thanks to the code we wrote in GameObject.cs that sets alive to false by default, it will also handle setting the initial values for the ships at the start of the game. So where do we add this code? Inside Update Enemy Ships, we have an IF conditional that checks if a particular ship is alive. If, below this IF statement, we add an ELSE, we can add some code that will only run if the initial IF statement is false, which will happen if the ship is dead. So below our IF SHIP ALIVE conditional, after its closing right curly brace, add the following. ELSE. Now inside this ELSE conditional, we're going to handle setting up position, velocity, and setting the ALIVE flag to true so we can get moving in the world. Let's start by setting the ALIVE flag. SHIP.ALIVE equals true. Now we need to set position. Remember that we created a random variable so we could set a random position? We need a bit more data to be able to do that. Let's leave this method as it is at the moment and go back up to the top of Game1.cs to add some extra variables. Find where you declared the enemy ships array, add a line below it, and add the following lines. Vector3 ship min position equals new vector3 negative 2000 F, 300 F, negative 6000 F. Vector 3, ship max position, equals new vector 3, 2000 F, 800 F, negative 4000 F. What are these? These are two vector 3s that represent the extreme ends of where the enemy ship should be. In general, they'll be above the player, anywhere from 300 to 800 units, anywhere from negative 2000 to 2000 units from side to side, and about negative 4000 to negative 6000 units back on the z-axis away from the screen. You can think of these vectors as defining a box in which the enemy ships can appear. We'll need to do the same for velocity, but since velocity will only be in one direction, toward the screen on the positive z-axis, it's much easier. Const float ship min velocity equals 5.0 f. Const float ship max velocity equals 10.0 f. If you're wondering why the vector 3s aren't set to const, they're classes, not basic types like float or int, and cannot be set to const. It isn't a perfect arrangement since, theoretically, we could accidentally modify these values in our code, but using a vector 3 keeps the values nicely arranged. Let's get back to update enemy ships. Now at the bottom of our unfinished code, below the else, where we set ship.alive to true, we have some work to do. Let's start with setting position. Position is a vector 3, and we need to get random values for each axis, the x, the y, and the z. This is going to be a lot of code, but we'll step through it. First, add this line, ship.position equals new vector 3. We're setting it up. Notice how we want to leave the parentheses unclosed? We're going to be adding some arguments. You'll want to use the next line for the first argument, so go down a line and add the following lines. Math helper dot lerp ship min position dot x ship max position dot x float r dot next double comma. This is the lerp method again, just like in the 2D game tutorial. It returns a floating point value, which will be the first argument to the new ship position, the x-axis. 
LERP takes three arguments of its own. The first two are the minimum and the maximum values, and the third is a value between 0 and 1, used to pick the value in between the first two arguments. For the first two arguments, use the x-axis of the ship min position and ship max position vectors. For the third argument, we get a floating point number from R, which is our random object. Random always returns a double precision number, so we need to use float to change that into a single precision floating point number, which is what we use. After that call, we add a comma, since that whole lerp method is just the first argument to the vector3 constructor for position, and we have two more to go. After the comma, add the following code. Math helper dot lerp ship min position dot y ship max position dot y float r next double comma same thing but on the y axis this is the second argument to our position vector constructor and it sets the y axis value of the vector one more comma for our final argument to the position constructor, the z value. Add the following after the comma. Math helper dot lerp ship min position dot z ship max position dot z float r next double. With this last argument, we filled a vector 3 with three random values inside a range of acceptable values, placing our enemy ship within an acceptable position that can be aimed at by the player. Since that was the last argument, we close off our parentheses and add the semicolon to finish the command. Now it's time to set the velocity. Below all the position setting, add the following easier code. Ship.velocity equals new vector 3, 0 0.0f, 0 0.0f, mathhelper.lerp, Ship min velocity, ship max velocity, float, r next double. Velocity is another vector 3, and creating it is fairly simple. The new vector 3 will create has no motion in either the x or y axes. The z axis is the interesting one. Using lerp, we set it to a value between ship min velocity and ship max velocity, and that will do it. We're short three right curly braces, one to close the else, one to close the for each, and one to close the method. So let's add those now, and we're done with this method. Last step, we'll draw the ships.